Hey, I'm Gigi, an ex-Amazon senior leader and bar raiser here at Day One Careers. So today we're talking about the Amazon cooling off period, which is a subject of much confusion in the market. So I'm going to try and clarify this for you. So let's start with what the Amazon cooling off period actually is. So the Amazon cooling off period is effectively a time out. It's a fixed amount of time where Amazon decides it's just not going to consider your application again. Now, the intent is that you kind of take some time to develop a bit in experience and skills before you try again. Now, the reason I think why there is so much confusion in the market is that there isn't really a universal approach to the cooling off period. Different teams have their own interpretation of it. So I'll take you through those different interpretations. So the first thing to note is that candidates who fail the early rounds don't usually get asked to take a cooling off period. Now to us here, that's a bit counterintuitive. If you don't manage to get past the first stage, it kind of seems to us that you are a long way off being bar raising and so probably really need that extra time to develop skills and experience. However, sadly, we are not in control of that policy. So the cooling off period usually applies to candidates who have actually made it through to the final interview, panel, loop, whatever it is you want to call it, and they fail there to be considered to be bar raising. Now it's those candidates that the interviewers feel are quite a long way off the bar that get instructed to take a cooling off period. Or it's those that maybe have failed the process a number of times in the recent past. So now we come to other points of deviation. So some teams apply the principle to the cooling off period only to the role type that the candidate has interviewed for and that they are completely free to apply for other roles. Other teams apply a principle that the cooling off period is in fact universal for all roles across Amazon. Both decisions, by the way, do apply globally. Now, the next point of deviation is how long the cooling off period actually lasts. Some teams say six months, other teams say 12 months, and I've even heard of teams that say 18 months. So your recruiter should tell you if your interviewers have decided that you need to go into a cooling off period. And if they don't give you the exact details, we really encourage you to ask these two questions. Firstly, how long is the cooling off period for? And then secondly, is that cooling off period just for this role or is it for all role types in Amazon? Now, of course, here is the final kicker. So as far as we're aware, there is no systematic enforcement of the cooling off period. It's dependent on the recruiter for any role that you apply for to check your notes from previous applications and identify if that you are in fact in a cooling off period. And that is how candidates in some cases are actually able to get their applications considered even when they are in theory in a cooling off period or even more strangely and confusing sometimes where how candidates end up being contacted directly by Amazon recruiters when in theory they are in a cooling off period. So that's it. That's everything you need to know about the Amazon cooling off period. If you found this video useful and you want to help other candidates get visibility of this content, please do give it a thumbs up or uh, drop us a comment. Now, what you need to do is click the link here to claim your free day one careers customer obsession taster course. Watch that and you'll nail every customer obsession question asked of you in your Amazon interview or if you want to do that a little bit later, why don't you check out more here of our incredible insights and advice on Amazon interview preparation.